What are we starting with this week? A, a Patreon. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you to our patrons over on Patreon. Thank if you. If you would like to join our Patreon, you can at patreon.com forward slash sci guys. There are many wonderful things for you to do there. What can they do there? They can go to Patreon and <laughs> they, can, <laughs> they get, can get bonus episodes. Yeah. They can get they can watch back all the live shows we've ever done. They can vote on episodes. They can Submit watch our brand episode. new show After Dark. Whoa. S- submit episode topics too. You could do oh, that. Oh, you could do that, yeah, if you want to if you want us to talk about something. We also gave our patrons a tiny little tiny little ten percent discount on our merch. We did. Oh, we did. It is cheaper. Still running yeah. now. You yeah. can get it. Speaking of, have you had our merch yet? That's the question for this week. Have you seen our brand new merch? It is mwah. Very cool. If you haven't seen it, head over to normalcitizen.store and take a little peek. And let us know in the comments if you have seen it or if you haven't seen it. Don't worry, we won't shame you for not having seen it. We just we just want to know. And if you're listening on Apple or Spotify, head over there and comment on YouTube. Let's start the show. Let's start, start the, the show. Hello and welcome to the Sci Guys, the show where we talk about the crazy, weird, and wonderful stories from the science world. I'm Corey, and as always, I'm joined by my co-hosts, Jamp and Luke Cutfer. Hello. Howdy. Oh, this week, we're talking <laughs> about aces and arrows. Aces oh. as in asexual? Mm-hmm. Asexuals. What are arrows? Aero- aromantics. Yeah. Uh, We're not really talking about them, but aces and arrows sounds no, good together. No, but we I've, just mentioned them to make them feel good. They're on the ace spectrum. Yeah. I thought it was asexuals and also the chocolate bar arrows. <laughs> Honestly, that's Bubbly goodness. Hashtag not spawn. Uh, yeah, so we're talking about asexuality this week. Our patrons have voted it in. And this is the thing. If you're sitting in the comments right now, tapping, tapping away on your keyboard saying, Corey, in all caps, why on earth would you do an episode on asexuality and not bring in an asexual? Because none of my friends that are asexual wanted to join. I did see you tweet. I did tweet. I did um, see, yeah. It's not that they didn't want to join because they don't like Psy Guys. Some of them have been on Psy Guys before. However, uh, this was very short notice because it was a patron vote. They're asexual. They're not asexual Guys. <laughs> Blame our patrons is what I'm saying. And patrons, feel bad about and yourselves. And blame our asexual friends. <laughs> and <laughs> Corey's scheduling. <laughs> if they keep wanting guests, we're going to have to do these earlier. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And that is that is actually something we're going to be doing. So we will be moving the patron vote to just a little bit earlier. So you're going to be voting for an episode a month in advance. But what that means is that at some point in January or February, you're going to get two patron vote episodes. Ooh. Very nice. Very Spicy. fun. Yeah, very cool. So let's start off the episode. What is asexuality it's a spectrum when you don't feel sexual attraction or romantic attraction to people what no you can feel romantic attraction to be asexual yeah you can feel well, romantic attraction yeah to be we're asexual. talking about ace and arrows yeah we're ah. not, i said but as i said i said ace and arrow because it sounds nice you we're, can't all right so we're, can't, fo- we're focusing in on the sexual attraction <laughs> yes we're yes. focusing in on the asexual we're answering the question it. that was asked so we're, acknowl- we're acknowledging a rom- well he said aromantics are part of the asexuals in this case are they you said we're, we're including them in. No. You said you weren't, weren't going to no, reference no. them. No. We're including them in the episode. It, we're not including just, them in the definition of asexuality. So you just mention them at the top and then ignore them for the rest of the episode. No. Ex- ignore them for the one for that question. <laughs> that one question, Jeff. God. Do you go again? <laughs> no. I want you to feel embarrassed about taking this so off the rails. I don't know why you said we're ignoring them then. <laughs> Stop asking stop. questions. Jesus. <laughs> stop it. <laughs> Just stop. Leave the questions to Luke. Corey, asexuality is a spectrum of uh, feeling uh, like you don't have sexual attraction. Or, or not just feeling like you don't have sexual attraction, it's not having sexual attraction. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So, um, this is an issue, though, uh, for a science podcast. Why might it be an issue for a science podcast? I don't know. Why might it be? Is it. A high, hard to test in, or to is it under, understudied. Well, what does asexual mean other in other areas? Oh, there's science? another meaning for asexual. Yes. So I want to be clear. In biology, usually when we say asexual, it's used to describe an organ organism that doesn't use sexual reproduction in order to make more copies yes. that are itself or similar to itself. Like a My, plant. Mitosis. Um yeah, well, plants can actually sexually reproduce as well. But plants can asexual. Y- yeah, and with other plants. Um, wow. Yeah. So Options. Picky. Many, no, they're not picky. That's yeah, exactly well, the point. 
Sorry, I meant they have a lot to pick from. <laughs> <laughs> you meant the opposite of Piggy. <laughs> I feel like your track record so far in this episode has not been Sorry, great. I might, just, I might just leave. I'm not feeling well. <laughs> maybe maybe two minutes of silence from you, and uh, we'll get on with the episode. Oh, so Piggy, <laughs> by which I mean not Piggy. <laughs> uh, so... Yeah, I uh, just want to be clear. If you've seen the title of this episode, be like, asexuality, are we talking about asexual organisms? Uh, to an extent, but not in that way. We're talking about asexual people. Um, but I just I just wanted to bring that up because that is that is uh, somewhat relevant to the podcast. You know, there's one definition of asexual. We're talking about a different definition of asexual. And at some point we might get to why one of those definitions is maybe slightly a misnomer. Ooh. Yes. Mm. Ooh. But I want to say up top that no matter what we say about asexuality throughout this episode, we're really just giving our opinions based on the situation. Ultimately, labels are labels. They are there to make you feel good and to help you like explain what's going on with you to other people. So don't let anything that we say in this episode shake your world. If you disagree with us, that's fine. It's actually very I'm desirable. Scared. Yeah. <laughs> asexuality. I love a fight. <laughs> <laughs> no challenge me to a duel <laughs> yeah challenge me to a duel if any of us say anything you disagree with get in the comments challenge us to a duel in fact we will ignore every disagreement that does not start with I challenge you to a duel yeah that's the new one actually we'll settle it with a round of fisticuffs <laughs> so into asexuality as Luke said it is correct uh, as Luke said he is correct it is a spectrum <laughs> asexuality is correct I have said that <laughs> absolutely so asexuality is a spectrum it is uh, it's a kind of a nebulous term so it could be someone that doesn't experience any sexual attraction who experiences limited sexual attraction who only experiences sexual attraction under certain circumstances demisexuality yes that is that is that is one of those so demisexuality is what uh, you only experience sexual attraction once you have like a, a bond with somebody yeah. like you know them well a deep emotional bond Yes, absolutely. That's nice. And um, ero like so, aromantic is kind of on the a spectrum. Um, it, it like in that it is basically the same as asexuality, but not with sexual attraction. It's with romantic attraction. So you can be a romantic, but still, you love to get it, get it on. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Yeah, and that would be a romantic. Yeah. No, no, no. That would be aromantic and a romantic. A romantic would be someone that's uh. a very romantic person, Luke. Yep. Thank you very much, Corey. <laughs> what about aromatic? <laughs> that is a, that is a compound that has a benzene ring. <laughs> or it's very nice smelling. <laughs> this is like one of those TikToks where it's like, or like one of those Twitter threads. It's like, no, not aromantic. You're thinking aromatic. Yeah. No, 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 no. That's a compound with a benzene ring. You're thinking asexual. <laughs> Yeah. The reason that uh, aromatics uh, are, are aromatics, you know, with the benzene are called that is because a lot of them have smells that are they're, they're, a lot of them are aromatic. That's literally where the name comes from. Aroma. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So back to asexuality and aromaticism. So um, obviously they are somewhat related. We're going to be focusing more on asexuality today because that's the topic that we've been given, and there's a lot to talk about. Okay. Mm -hmm. You're all valid. I want to say that up top. Everyone is valid, except for Jamp. <laughs> I agree. No, I agree as well today. Cool. No duels yeah. yet. Uh, <laughs> so, <clears throat> um, obviously, uh, people that are aromantic can experience sexual attraction, just limited in certain situations. You know what I mean, so like, there's this idea that people that are asexual don't experience any sexual attraction whatsoever, or aren't interested in sex. An asexual person could love sex, just love it, just not experience sexual attraction. We'll get kind of into the difference between those in a second, but first, just want to let you know that asexuals make up anywhere from between like 1% to 6% of the population. It is very difficult um, to get an exact number on that. The 1% where that came from, I think, I think there was a sort of 1.5% number that was given by a certain researcher, but that is not terribly um, reliable. Uh, it is it's difficult to get good numbers on how many people are asexual, anywhere from like 1% to 6%. But I will say that you tend to find that more uh, women are asexual than men. So there's a greater population of um, women that identify as asexual than there are men which I think is interesting hmm. and can be explained in some ways, which we might get into later. But sexual desire and attraction. What is the difference between sexual desire and sexual attraction? Do you know? You don't need to know. That's fine. Just mm. let me know. Sexual attraction more to do with... Oh. Would be sexual attraction be finding somebody sexually attractive and sexual desire is like the desire, desire. to have sex? 
like you're I horny. I mean, yeah, Luke, you, <laughs> can I just, you've described, so you've defined both of those words using the words. So like sexual attraction would be um, you like either look at somebody or you hear them or you smell them on the wind mm -hmm. and you are like, I would like to move closer to that person. They are sexually attractive to me, and sexual desire is like the want to have sex, not necessarily uh, like not necessarily uh, directed at a person, just that you want to have yeah, sex. Yeah, you're pretty spot on there. So I think the way that it's kind of described is desire is more about the sort is more about sort of action, right? So sexual desire is like sex. Yeah. Yeah, well, not yeah, not just the act of sex, but like the sort of yeah, the, the, it's more action based. Right? Yeah. So the act of sex falls into that absolutely, yeah. um, and attraction is more uh, sort of. Uh, focusing on um, existing desires or um, generating new ones, right? So, I mean, we kind of get what attraction is, right? Like, if I was to say, look at either of you and be like, oh boy, I want a slice of that, um, that would probably be attraction, right? Sure. Oh, thank you. It's fine. Put down the knife. <laughs> the key word there being if. Yeah. The knife. Yeah, you're, that gets a bit kinky for me. Slice like, of me. <laughs> slice oh, me up. God. <laughs> so. The, the key point here is that sexual attraction and sexual desire are kind of different things. Uh, head on to the uh, sort of the references uh, if you want to sort of learn more about this. I'm not going to spend too much time looking at it, uh, but yeah, this is this is something that kind of makes it a little bit more understandable, I guess. That being asexual doesn't mean against sex or not wanting sex, which is why I feel like it can be confusing that it shares its name with. Um, Asexual, as in the mode of reproduction mm, that um, mm. specifically is non, like non-sexual. You know what mm. I mean? So, like, yeah, ace people can have sex. They can enjoy sex. They can also be sex repulsed. Basically, here's here's a, a crazy and wild thing I want want you both to do. Um, and, and I know you two have never done this before because I know you very well. Sex. Now, yeah. Well, <laughs> yes, <laughs> Luke, you haven't. Sure. Jamp, on the other hand, kinky, kinky little uh, bastard. Anyway, kinky um. <laughs> Just look into those Two eyes. Two opposite ends of the spectrum. The kinks, minks, yeah. Um, <laughs> no, so what I want you to do is just to picture ace people. Okay. And I remember. A specific ace person? No, no, no just in general. But remember okay. that okay. asexual people are people. Wow. Inc oh, incredible. Crazy, no right? So much like other people, they can vary in their desire to have sex. I have learned well, that's today. Crazy. Right? Because yeah. just think about this. Everyone else you know that is allosexual, that isn't asexual, there's, there's variations in, like, you know, how much they enjoy sex yeah. and, and all of that, yes. right? Yeah. yeah. This is so, actually something that I, I've, never, I've never quite got, and so I'm excited to sex? learn. Um, <laughs> <laughs> how many times will this joke be made today? <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah. I feel like of all episodes, it's probably the most inappropriate time to make the joke. But anyway, um, <laughs> my so my point is, is that um, I have... So, a, an asexual person can have sex. They can enjoy sex. Right, and that doesn't change whether they're asexual or not. It's the fact that they don't experience the desire to have sex. Is that the case? It's, that no, it's more that they don't experience sexual attraction. They can still want. They can still experience desire to have sex. Whoa. Okay. I. As I'm gonna need some help understanding the difference between those. Please. Well, as far as I'm aware, like I mean, bear in mind. I, I think this is this is why it's difficult. Again, right? it's a spectrum. I understand because that. you can be. Yeah. So okay. Um, so the desire to have sex, like if we think about what sex is, yeah, it is thing that feel good. Yes, mm -hmm. right. So they can we've be got motivated cultural... towards thing that feels good. Yeah, we've yeah. got a lot of cultural things that like. Okay, so all right, um, there there are a number of things that we do that feel good. Massage feel very good. Feel very good. I like massage, but we don't have the cultural attachment um, to massage that we have to sex. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's not like we pursue massages. Um, for any reason other than like we can pursue we can pursue a massage for reasons like for basically just because we enjoy it right mm -hmm. and the same can go for sex you don't necessarily like i don't know about you luke i don't think this applies to you but like jamp have you ever had sex with anyone that you're like you're like you're not that attractive but like you know yeah right yeah right you just you're like so you can yeah so you can be want wanting to move towards the kind of physical stimuli yeah. of sex but you don't necessarily feel um, or like you feel on differing levels of like, um, I, I, I want to have sex with this person over this person based on like some, uh, 
kind of process my brain has done to determine their attractiveness. Yeah, sure. Yeah, absolutely. Right. So, like, this is the end. Like, obviously, asexual people are very varied. I feel like I shouldn't need to say this, but obviously, I, I, I think no, that, no, not yeah. for you. I, I, obviously, I do. Like, um, but I mean, we're going to say it after every sentence. If absolutely. We, if, if we, yeah, yeah, have yeah. That, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, like, asexual people are very varied. So, um, if you're going to be in the comments being like, oh, but actually, I'm asexual and I, I know you're an individual and that's okay. Um, what yeah. I mean is that, like, so some asexual people, like, sex repulse, some asexual people are, well, have sex with their partners because it's something their partner wants. And some asexual people can enjoy sex because it, it feels good. I feel like there's this idea that asexual people kind of like are biologically wired to hate all mm, sex. Sure. Terrified. Sure. Of and, it. I, and, and I, and like, look, I, I might have gotten the complete wrong end of the stick here, but from what I've read, that doesn't really seem to be the case. And it like, again, asex, like when we're talking about this, we're talking less about science um, and we're talking more about, social labels yeah and i'll get to that in a i'll get to that in a bit because i've got a little bit of a i've got a little bit of a manifesto um mm. to to give oh can i just ask one last question before we reveal your manifesto no 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 I, we'll, 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 we've got a little bit before my okay. manifesto but by go by all means go and ask a question well i i'm just i'm just trying to understand I, i'm trying to understand so um okay so uh, remembering that all asexual people are different and that there's differing levels etc um, if you took somebody who was like a textbook average asexual person that may not exist, I understand that, uh, but like just <laughs> I'm no, just no, trying to get it. I will, so we'll 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 take what what someone would uh, what we'd think that the average reasonable person would uh, consider to be um, the average example of an asexual person. Well, but that, I mean they might be wrong, so they're not wrong. Hmm? Okay, but like what well, I mean, like an average no, no. an average person might be wrong about what an asexual average person reasonable is. reasonable person. Okay, so an average person who understands asexuality, yeah, the kind of person they would imagine, right? Sure. Yeah. So how would this average uh, asexual person um, choose who they want to have sex with if they enjoy the act of sex? Is it like who is nice or like uh, who wants to have sex with them? Romantic attraction, for example. Romantic attraction. Okay, right. No, no, but again, could okay, be. so it could be like I am. I am giving this is. I am giving you. Just one option. Of I understand. Many. Yeah. Okay. 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 So, I, yeah, it's just, it's just so interesting because I wouldn't necessarily, um, th these are all like separate parts of attraction, okay. which I haven't necessarily separate, separated out before Yeah. because how, I, I experienced multiple of them. How would a, I guess, okay, how would a blind person, right? So you like, okay, so like if, if you base who you want to have sex with based on looks, right? Yeah. Um, as in, I, I base who I want to have sex with entirely based on looks. Um, on whatever Luke's. Luke says, yes, oh. I, I I have sex with. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he says, "Gory, over there." I'm like, "Gotcha, buddy." Usually not <laughs> just name. Usually not just me. Any Luke, it's a really like, weird thing he does. <laughs> hey, it's never steered me wrong, <laughs> except for those five times, and we will not speak of them. Um, but a, 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 a blind <laughs> so, person, for example, might find a voice sexy. I imagine, but or my, find my, a so, smell sexy. So my 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 analogy here that I got sidetracked on yeah. um, is that imagine asking the question right if you base your, your, uh, who you want to have sex with on looks um <coughs> sorry your accent is so distracting when i know I'm Luke. i know <laughs> my okay. mom did this my entire life hold on so if you base who you who you want to have sex with on yep. looks yeah then effectively uh <laughs> God damn it, i hate switching we got between those. uh effectively uh if you look at a blind person you'd be like oh how do you choose who to have sex with well, and no, they have and there are other so my, 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 no, but my, my, what i'm trying to say i can trigger the sexual attraction response well what i'm trying to say here is that so because you've got something that you are so incredibly focused on it's yeah. very hard you've almost got blinders on it's so hard for you to think think about all the other things that there are yeah right so if you're so focused on looks for example you'll forget that there are many other um reasons that someone could be attracted to someone and and again so like uh, and it's just an analogy because yeah. on top of that what i'm saying is we think of like we're so focused on sexual attraction being the only reason to have sex with someone that we forget that actually we encounter many other reasons that people have sex with sex with other people like yeah and also other things might be going on subconsciously in you if if you have a a preoccupation with visual for example there may be smells yeah. sounds like the tone mm -hmm. of voice which actually modify how visibly attractive you are, you are to somebody you mm -hmm. just don't realize it yeah absolutely yeah yeah so i mean there are, like and again like i'm sure there's there <laughs> and this is this is this goes back to a sort of contrapoints tweet um that uh <laughs> that oh, garnered God. some um i guess some is backlash it deleted now it's probably deleted now i mean if i say 
ContraPoint's tweet, there is it's at least gone. an eighty percent chance that thing <laughs> that thing was deleted thirty minutes after it went up. <laughs> <laughs> you got to get get in quick to to see him. Um, like yeah, so there was a ContraPoint's tweet that said, um, like, uh, what is it? part of it was uh you know i'm an asexual um slur for people who have a lot of sex that i don't want to say on the podcast uh who just love sex i'm an asexual person who loves sex um and she presented that as being like this is something that like on further inspection makes sense but it is said in the community and it almost feels mm. um on the face it, of it, it seems contradictory. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah, exactly. It almost seems it almost seems like a, a sort of like a, a paradox, paradoxical, yeah. right? Yeah, um, oxymoronic rather. Um, and it and it, that is that I, I understand why people would think that, right? But obviously, like this is why we're having this conversation. Um, and obviously, I, I would be fantastic if we could have had one of our asexual friends join us. But this time in December, everyone is far too busy. The patrons and demand it. The patrons demand it. Uh, but we could also do another episode on this, you know, um, another spin, yeah. anything like that. But uh, yeah, like, so asexual people can't have sex. It, it, they are not, uh, they are not unable to, or and some of them might even desire to. Crazy. And uh, brand new information, I'm sure for many people, like seriously, brand new information for many people. But mm. like, uh, I really think that like, this episode more than anything is less of a sort of like, let's look at all of the, the fun experiments that people have done on asexual people and more kind of like, Let's change the way that we think about this. Mm. Yeah. So the first thing we're going to get onto is the history of asexuality studies. Um, and I, again, I'm going to say go to the references because there's a lot of really good um, sort of uh, review papers on this, like lots of really good reads on this. So uh, head down there. Uh, so um, before uh, the turn of the millennium, there there were not very many mentions of asexuality in reference to human sexuality uh in studies uh, before that um so the main ones um I'll, I'll just name i'll just like read this verbatim from the uh sort of uh, from the paper that i got it from so it says prior to the 21st century century only a few scientific studies outright um registered or named asexuality those by michael storms in 1979 and 1980 uh, paul and nurius in 1983 william masters at all in 86 and brandon uh uh, Braden Berkeley et al. in 1990. Uh, and there was basically no interest in asexuality as its own topic for a long, long time. Um, and even when it was kind of brought up, it was brought up in a way that is, I, I think, is quite odd. We'll, we'll get to that in a, in a little bit. But the way that science has looked at asexuality over the the years has not very it's not been great really mm. and you can definitely see the sort of parallels between um the way that asexuality has been treated and the way that um other lgbt groups have been treated um but obviously there are individual sort of quirks that um of, of the sort of like of this situation with asexuality that make it kind of unique uh, uh but then suddenly um i mean more i guess more people started um like publicly sort of identifying as asexual obviously like if we look through uh like stories and literature there have been characters that people have said, oh, this character is asexual. Uh, and Mr. Bean. Mr. Bean, sure. Mm -hmm. um, Sherlock, for example. There's lots yeah. of different characters that people have said. Like You look throughout history, you'd be like, oh, this character, you could say this character would be asexual like, mm, nowadays. Mm. Uh, so it's not like it's a brand new thing that has just happened. It is just something that hasn't really been sort of publicly yeah. spoken about. And, uh, you know, it, 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 yeah, it's not really been sort of we've not really had much of a name to put to it mm. in order to talk about it. Mm. And then there was kind of this explosion um, after, uh, like, you know, in the sort of 2000s um, and then onwards of, of studies. Uh, but I'll, I'll hop back to Kinsey. So uh, you guys know Kinsey? Mm -hmm. Kinsey scale. Yeah, absolutely. You want to give yeah. a little little overview of what the Kinsey scale is? Kinsey developed a scale of zero to six, I believe it was, where zero is completely straight and six is completely gay. Yeah. And everyone falls on the scale somewhere. Exactly. It's got two dimensions, is it not? No. No? Okay. no, the Kinsey scale, well, as far as I'm aware, the Kinsey scale um, is, it's got one dimension. That's a key thing there because Storms, who I mentioned uh, beforehand, was talking about the Kinsey scale being unidimensional. So Kinsey actually um, didn't actually, like, you know, sort of mention asexuality. Mm -hmm. uh, and obviously, if you think about the Kinsey scale and asexuality, what is the problem that we've got with the Kinsey scale and asexuality? It doesn't. It doesn't deal factor with it how in. much how much you experience sexual desire, just yeah. who you experience exactly. sexual desire for. Yeah. So, in the scale from heterosexuality to homosexuality, which includes most other sexualities, asexuality isn't there. And he would, if someone was sort of experienced like like an asexual, it's basically asexual. Uh, Kinsey would mark that kind of with an X. <laughs> um, it also doesn't deal in romanticism as that well. That is, I mean, I think that's adding an, yeah. another layer of complexity that is just yeah. not necessary in these studies. I just think it'd be super interesting to know how many like well understood or well accepted uh, like um, 
you know, uh, scale or dimensions of sexuality there are. Yeah, so th that's that's actually a part of my little manifesto that I'm going to get to. So oh. it's it, uh, my key point here is that Kinsey is interesting because on his sort of graph of the Kinsey scale, Kinsey scale, he didn't like asexuality isn't included, but he did he did like sort of recognize asexuality with that sort of X of like it doesn't it's not on the scale, but there's mm -hmm. no scale for it. it. It's just not on um, my scale, um, and it is interesting um so storms had a four quadrant sexuality thing which i think is honestly a terrible way of representing it um there was heterosexuality in one uh sort of uh bisexuality or abisexuality in another um homosexuality in another quadrant and then asexuality in the fourth quadrant uh again don't have an i, I don't like the way that this has been kind of uh dealt with for a long time and i think you've kind of touched on luke exactly the way that we should view this like this is something, and this is my manifesto here. This is something that has always kind of like almost bothered me slightly about the way that we talk about asexuality and the way that we talk about all of like all of these sort of um variances of um sexual and romantic attraction, is that if I ask you, um, hey Luke, are you, are, uh, what is your what is your sexuality? And you tell me I have no idea. I'm demisexual, right? Sure. Yeah. And I ask Jam, what's your sexuality? And Jam says, I'm homosexual, right? Those are providing different forms of information yeah. right so on this like the kinsey scale let's look at that as a as a view of like sexual attraction right yeah but then asexuality is almost um like a, a different dimension of that it's equal sure yeah, i'm not yeah, saying yeah. that asexuality is lesser like it's it's almost a different dimension that can like in some cases act as a modifier on another sexuality so you could say mm. like and this you see this when people say ah uh, yes i'm demi uh, I, I i'm demi pansexual Right, I'm right. Demi and Pan. Yeah. Yeah, 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 right, because they're providing different forms of information here. You can also be like something. You can be like romantic in one dimension and sexual in another dimension, and be asexual in a dimension. Yeah, like you could be you could be homo romantic, heterosexual, uh, and therefore you're asexual in the homosexual dimension, but sexual in the heterosexual dimension. Exactly. Mm. And it, yeah. well, I mean, this is. I think that I think that's kind of the issue, though, that we think of like. Um, we think of it as like instead of thinking of it as a scale of like oh who like who are we attracted to mm. it, it's almost like if you're like if you think of it as asexual and you're asexual to like um to heterosexuality i think of it i think of it as more a sort of like there is a there is sort of one uh scale sort of one dimension of the graph going from mostly heterosexual to mostly mostly homosexual right or yep. entirely heterosexual sure. to entirely homosexual and then there's right. another there's another dimension of the graph that goes from entirely asexual to like i don't know it like it, it like entirely sexual or allosexual mm, right mm. and those are two completely like separate dimensions like as in one of them describes who you're attracted to and the mm -hmm. other one describes how you are attracted yeah, yeah. it's yeah. it's it's never made sense to me that people um present like it, like as in it's, it's never made sense to me when people say sort of like i'm demisexual i'm like what what does but to who? But to who? What does <laughs> what infer like? It's it's. I think it's interesting because like ultimately we talk about if we talk about these labels, right? What? Why do we have labels for sexuality? For communication. Primarily, I yeah. think uh, oh, social reasons. Exactly. Generally, when you want sex, you have to communicate with the person you're having sex with. I would say like all the time. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. 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 No. Yeah. I, no. Pr mm. I think I would. I would give a, a pretty. I, I would. I would say <laughs> like heavy involvement. I would say that there is. Well, no, you know you got glory holes. You don't have to communicate there. I think that by sticking your dick through, that's a communication. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I think I think with all <laughs> sex, just mean, one must communicate. You don't need to use the words of sexuality, right, in order to communicate in sure. that situation. But yeah. in all cases, one must communicate consent. I would oh, say yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, but you don't need to communicate your sexuality in that. <laughs> yes, no. I'm sure that if you stick your dick in a glory hole, someone's going to assume that you're happy with anyone sucking it. Um, <laughs> the dick just says, "No, not you." <laughs> <laughs> oh God! <My> third eye. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's wide open. Anyway, um, oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh dear. So back to my back to my point. Um, is that it is it is interesting to me because. Yeah, these sexuality labels. Okay, one use of them as well. I'm, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna forget this. Is that one use of them is to uh, help you understand yourself, right? Yeah. Like, it, it, like making you feel like you have something like to, like to explain yourself. Um, like you mm. know what I mean. Like, like I Ian said in the in the in the science of gay sex episode about sexual scripting. Yeah. And if you've got like a term to identify with, and then you understand that that term can lead to positive outcomes, then you're 
you're going to feel better about your future. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So, it, so there, I'm not saying that um, sexual sexuality labels are only for the purposes of communication, but I would say that one of their primary purposes is that, right? Mm-hmm. Um, to the point where b- both are in, are very important. You mm. can't say one is way more important than the other, or, or or vice versa. So it is interesting to me that we 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 take sort of um, these labels, many of these labels for asexuality, and treat them as semantically identical to labels for other sexualities like when, homosexual and heterosexual and stuff yeah, 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 yeah because and i think a key point of this is that yeah. we assume that we assume allosexuality right as, as in we assume that people are that experience yeah. like um sexual attraction uh, like we assume that people experience sexual attraction to what we would deem a normal level mm-hmm. right uh we as- we assume people would so okay so when, okay so look if yeah. if if someone were to come up to you and say hello look i am a bisexual woman yeah you would not assume you would you would make the assumption that she is not um asexual i would make that assumption yes but she has not specified to you that she isn't or is asexual you've just made the assumption because she hasn't specified that she is asexual right yeah interesting i mean yeah and and so but would i mean if somebody was bisexual this is maybe splitting hairs and i'm trying to understand but like if somebody was bisexual as in was attracted to removing the sexual bit to both uh or uh, both ends of a gender spectrum um would they not be biromantic they could be and asexual what would they be biromantic and asexual or because bisexual would bisexual in- oh no 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 suggest so, a sexual attraction so they could still be so mm, that because this is the key point as well. Back at the top, I said that asexuality isn't just no sexual attraction. It's uh, little to no. Yeah. So someone that's okay. demisexual, we that's on the ace spectrum, right? Yeah. Yeah. Or gray or gray gray ace people who are yeah. like kind of there's a it's like, uh, you know kind of maybe yeah. sometimes. And so someone could be demi and bisexual or demi and heterosexual. Mm. And it's just interesting to me that like that like you know when you say oh, I'm asexual, it's con- it's conveying different information. And yeah. it's just, it's just I, like again, I'm just saying, I'm just pointing this out as I think it's, it's, I think it's interesting. I don't think we talk about asexuality. Well, we don't talk about asexuality very much at all. But when we do talk about it, I feel like the the greater consensus, um, or the, the sort of greater public knowledge on asexuality is limited, and so it kind of stumps the w- the way that we have these conversations. Mm-hmm. You're yeah. right. You definitely, you definitely assume sexual attraction within what will be considered sort of a quote normal range, ranging from some sexual attraction to quite a lot but not hypersexual Mm -hmm. um you would assume in that in that range unless the person told you um something else yeah absolutely in the same way that we'd assume someone was like uh, often people would assume someone was straight until they said they were otherwise which i do the exact opposite i will assume you are not straight unless you tell me that you are with the social circles that I seem to go in. Most people I know aren't straight. That's a good bet. Yeah. In in our part of the world, yeah. Yeah, You know, like, you know, like how some of our friends are just straight and you're like, really? Uh, Are you? Are you okay? I'd definitely be surprised if you introduced me to somebody and they were just flat out straight. I'm not even looking for them though. Like, they just, (laughs) they just like, they come to me. Straight and cis would be like, whoa. I don't even think I know any straight trans people. Really? Oh yeah. No, they're all bi. They're all bi. They're yeah, all exactly. bi. Yeah. Every single one. But if you're bi and straight and trans, straight and ah, if you're straight and trans, that's fine. Valid. I don't want to know you. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. No, 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 keep that in. Leave it, leave it, leave it. Just stress it as a joke. No, 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 no. No, just keep it in the stress as a joke. That's quite funny. Yeah. Corey is um not bothered about knowing you. Not either enthusiastic nor unenthusiastic. I'm ambivalent. Yes. Ambivalent. If he knows you, fine. Jesus. If he doesn't care that he doesn't know you. <laughs> but if you're trans and you know Corey, you do need to come out as straight to him. Yeah, I will assume that you're not. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, uh, the same that I would assume a cis person. Please wasn't. make your intentions clear. What? No. No. A heterosexual. If you have persuasion. intentions, leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> Unless I say that he needs to be attracted to you. Oh, absolutely. Case. Or in which case, in, yeah. uh, look, don't speak to me about it. Speak to Luke. Yeah. He, he's my, he's basically my PA when it comes to this. I'll let him know. He'll filter it. My penile assistant. <laughs> oh. oh. God. <laughs> oh. Let's take it there. He tells me where to put it. This is an awful lot of pressure on me. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm going to offload this to a different Luke. <laughs> <laughs> Luke Hemmings. <laughs> Luke Hemmings from Five Seconds of Summer. Can you please take on the task of yeah. 
ordering Corey's penis about. Thank Luke you Cottingham, very much. Luke Cottingham, maybe? My friend Luke Cottingham. Yeah. I'll drop him a text. Please so do. You've got a new, uh, a, a new duty. A <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so I, I guess just to, to, to finish that off is that um, it it is interesting because... Um, yeah, like these these categories aren't real. Obviously, they're simplifications to describe ourselves to other people, and so there's going to be overlaps and like it's not going to be super clear all the time. But yeah, it's just interesting that one set of one set of these says who you're attracted to, and the other says how you're attracted. But yeah. we treat them almost as being the same information. Just something to think about. So even just saying asexual doesn't tell you everything. You could still have a preference, even, you know, even slightly. Th- that's that's the thing. That is the thing. Like I like when someone says. Like I'm asexual, and like it's not that I need to know who they're gonna be like dating or whatever. Yeah. But it's so interesting. Like if someone says I'm asexual, all that gives me is that their sexual attraction. It, they, they experience like little to no sexual attraction. But yeah. like if they experience some sexual, who is it? Who is it to? If do you know what I mean? And like I'm not saying that like uh, I deserve to know this. He needs to know. I need to know. He's keeping a database. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I'm just saying it's interesting that like it is conveying very different information yeah. to other people. Yeah. I mean, it's not that that information is lesser or better or worse or whatever. It's just uh, it's just an interesting thing I've noticed that I wanted to get off my chest on the podcast. Is it off your chest? Yeah, yeah until I'm cancelled for it, yeah. Okay. Oh. Now we've thought then it's on your back. back on your chest. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, and also, I've got written down here, and I'll read that verbatim. It says... <clears throat> I'm not invalidating asexuality or saying it's not equal. And if you're ace and this is the first time you've heard it and it makes you feel less valid in how you describe yourself, please don't let my opinion affect you. You do you. Well, you do no one. Sorry. (laughs) Very good. I mean, (laughs) that is very... Well, no, because they can do people. That's hilarious. Sorry, it is incorrect, yeah. But Unless you asexually reproduce, in which case you do do you. No. No, don't. That's even. Why would you do make a clarification and make it worse? <laughs> like it's like, hey, Jam, here's a, ju- a shovel to dig yourself out of that hole. Cool, I'll keep digging down. Oh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> right. Okay, by the way, like we we know that asexual people can have sex. Jam was just making a little play on words. <laughs> um, we're not saying that asexual people don't have sex. We've said this all throughout the episode. So, yes, no, it was a joke. Sorry. Great. I love you, asexuals. When you have sex with yourself, if you're a plant. Is it asexual reproduction? Because it's kind of sexual reproduction, but with yourself. I think I, can't I googled the this. Terms. I think I yeah. googled this because it, it stressed me out, and yeah. <laughs> I couldn't find the right answer. Because oh. it is. This is what's frustrating. It's using sexual reproduction, but it's self fertilization is what it is. So yeah. it's it's technically self reproduction. It is technically sexual reproduction, but it is also mm. asexual. Yeah, but does sexual reproduction require? more than one organism is that sort of in the definition of sexual yeah yeah, yeah but it's it's using the apparatus for sexual re- it's like self mm. it, it is it is technically asexual reproduction in that it, it is like well i mean so i think ace this is the diff- this is my issue i think asexual reproduction doesn't just mean like an organism um reproducing on its own it's reproducing non-sexually mm-hmm. so it depends on all these like kind of weird little definitions mm. i've had conflicting things when i looked it up i wonder how long before we can take an egg and we can turn it into a sperm and then oh, we can do we, that. We can already do it. I'm pretty sure you, we can do that. Then you can make a clone of yourself. Yeah, we can do in that. In your own womb. What, n- clone of yourself in your own womb. Mm, mm, uh, complications there, probably. But I'm pretty sure we have been able to take a sperm, uh, an egg cell, and uh, turn it into a sperm cell. I, I think in a lab. Yeah. I don't think it's been like not been a, but a like, child born from it. But yeah. I think it's. I think that is possible. Turn it into a sperm cell, not just like take the DNA and implant it mm. into an egg. Literally. Oh. No, it's not got a tail. It's just no, no. But you would you would take the you would take the, the yeah. you take the DNA and implant it into so a sperm cell. You can cell. fertilize an egg. No, no. What I'm saying is oh. you would take the DNA and oh. implant, it, implant it into a sperm cell. Cool. I looked it up, and uh, um, so they have made uh, sperm cells from not I don't think from an egg, but from a from what they call stem cells. Uh, I'd have to look into it more. Uh, maybe we'll do an episode on it in the future. But uh, they you can make uh, sperm cells uh, from basically uh, from uh, conceivably from females without. Uh, the natural ability to produce sperm in the gonads. Cool. Yeah. Very cool. Magic. Yeah. That's well. fun. So we get back to asexuality. Yes. Yes, please. So, um, actually, interestingly, they've uh, they, they've like studied a- animals and found asexuality in animals. And this is one of those things where I say interesting, in- interestingly, I say interestingly, and then I mess it up. But I say interesting. <laughs> <laughs> interesting. <Keep going>. Interestingly. <laughs> Go yes. Ah, that's it. So I say that, and God, I hope this is interesting. <laughs> it well, wasn't. It isn't. That's the point. Oh, okay. Interestingly, this is really boring. Well, no, because 
like we say, oh, there, there's homosexuality found in animals too. Yeah, it's like we're animals. Why wouldn't there be? We what, are. Yeah, what, no. Uh, what do you no, think is separate from animals going on? Like, well, know. I think what they think is going on is culture. Yeah, but yeah, I know. But yeah. like, like, if you ever seen like dogs hump legs, are you sure they're not going to like hump another like a boy? Yeah. Like they're going to refuse to hump a dog because that dog is a boy? No, they don't care. I'll I'll hump this leg. But that's not gay. But I won't hump that dog because that's not gay. gay. <laughs> Humping a, a dog's leg? That's well, uh, well, a gray area. It's not gay if it's just the leg. It's what I always say. <laughs> I know. I keep telling you to stop. <laughs> <laughs> so they've actually found that in rodents, there are, like in, in like sort of mice and rats, that there are varying um, sort of uh, ranges of sexual, like, uh, sexual uh, sort of activity mm. in these animals, which, again, kind of makes sense like if there's a spectrum of asexuality that we are all on mm. just the same as there is the different dimension spectrum of sexual attraction uh, sort of like who we're sexually attracted to that we're all on it would make sense that the same applies to different animals so they've seen it in rodents um in rats so some rodents oh god this is really awful and this is gives you an idea of why asexuality is maybe an issue when it comes to uh, studying in science. Uh, so some of rodents that are um, like that have lots of sex, that have hypersexualized behavior, are called uh, studs. Whilst the others that have uh, lack of sexual interest in partners are labeled duds. Oh, oh. yeah, not are you nice. A stud or a dud? Yeah, not ne- not necessarily the best. That so sucks. It does. Uh, but they've also st- they've also looked at um, asexuality in rams, and apparently rams can be a good. Uh, can be a good sort of model for uh, different sexualities in humans. Apparently, apparently bisexual rams uh, act similarly to bisexual men, according to this study. As in, <laughs> just, no, as, just in, as, in as in, as in, if you want, ram. if you want an animal model, you yeah. can use, you can use a ram. Right. In the same way that if we want to model depression, we we have a rat model of depression. Right. So, what do you mean by this? Do you mean that like? The brain chemistry of bisexuality <laughs> no, 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 is similar no, no. Behavior. in rams. Behavior. No. What do you what? mean by what do you mean by the behavior, behavior. of bisexual men? What As do you in, mean by that? Uh, the way that so uh, some rams could be bisexual. I, th- I think it says here that um, some rams uh, can have uh, can be sort of uh, bisexual, but can um, y- yeah yeah. The, it, it literally just says that they that their sort of um, sexual inclinations can uh, be similar to um can be similar to uh bisexual men gay men or heterosexual men like as in just their behavior in regard to their partners and um who they have sex with mm. the use that they have sex with rather you they have sex with mm. oh. what use not me use oh, okay. female sheep yes. Jeez, louise yeah, no not us as... no not use no not used to no right use, use. to uh, you two no use <laughs> no you two and use to Okay. Bono no, really loves to bone rams. Rams. Oh. to ram a ram. Oh dear. <laughs> so, no, what I'm saying is that basically uh, rams can be a, just a model in the same way that we model depression with rats, as in, like, we can give them learned help, sort of that learned helplessness. Mm. And that's a rat model for depression. If we want to study depression, but we don't want to use humans, mm. we need to use animals, we can use rats. We have a similar model for that. The same goes for, so it's, it's not a case of like the brain chemistry or anything. I think you're thinking too, like, sort of specific scientifically. We're literally just looking at sort of behavior. I just don't understand what you mean by the the behavior of bisexual rams is similar to the behavior of human bisexual people, um, because I don't know what you mean by that. Because when In, the behavior of bisexual, like if you mean just that they are so, bisexual, then that's just and how they engage with partners. So if we think, okay, right. so if we think about this, like if I was to say to you, it, like I could say the same, like it doesn't make sense to model depression on rats because rats don't have jobs. No, but I just don't know what you mean by like so like the specifics of like how they engage with partners. What is that like? I think we're yeah. getting stuck down on something that doesn't really matter. <laughs> okay, it's just like a throwaway. Like what I'm saying is that they've got animal models for sexuality, and they they think that they can apply the same thing to asexuality um, with rams. Cool, because some rams have little to no sexual desire. Oh, that's yeah, nice. And for the part of this episode that is probably going to be quite controversial, uh, but. I'd be remiss not to talk about it because we're talking about the scientific sort of study of asexuality. Uh, and obviously what I'm about to talk about isn't what asexuality is, but it's often conflated with it. Uh, and again, I don't agree with this. I'm just bringing it up to be thorough. Have either of you heard of HSDD? No. Hypoactive sexual desire disorder. No. Or also, I think uh, there is a DSAID um, in generally in women. No? 
No. So uh, hyperactive sexual desire disorder is basically when you're not interested in sex, you've got low sex drive or no sex drive, and it bothers you. It's causing interpersonal interpersonal conflict. Um, and it's like a it's just a very common sexual problem. It can be caused by any number of things like relationship problems, anxiety, depression, uh, body image issues, stress, tiredness, um, trauma, uh, low hormone levels, um, like cancer, diabetes, chemotherapy, um, like antidepressants, blood pressure medicines, um, menopause, pregnancy, delivery, or breastfeeding. It can cause all of that. Basically, it's just a uh, sort of pathologization. Uh, uh, pathologization. Patholo- pathologization pathologization of that does not that's not a word it doesn't sound like a word you know i'll say that making again. into a pathology of low sexual desire exactly right mm-hmm. it's saying people have low sexual desire and we can treat them in this way so that their sexual desire is like as if that is not a valid thing to be well to be fair um i guess if they're un- if they're unhappy but that's kind of like that's kind of like uh, gay conversion therapy. It's like... I wouldn't. I, I think that there is. No, I think that this is this is where it becomes difficult, right? Because this, I think there is quite a difference between this and conversion therapy, because ultimately, th- this isn't necessarily a lack of sexual attraction. This is a lack of sexual desire, and also it can be intermittent. It's not necessarily a lifelong thing. Mm. Like, like you know, it can be caused by depression or medication. So it's like, oh, usually my my sexual desire and my sexual drive is quite high, and then suddenly it's not, and that's distressing. I mean, yeah. it's not yeah. like suddenly you like just wake up one day and you turn gay, you know, <laughs> like it's not like, you know, oh, you get depressed and oh boy, I, I want to get to that glory hole. You know, like it's, it's not how that works. Right. No. So, by the way, can I just check? Cause I think a lot of people will be confused by this. Was it hyposexual? Hypo. So that's like the, that's the opposite of hyper. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Cool. H-Y-P-O as in low. Cause I heard hypersexual and then you were like, and that's the. Having low right. sexual desire. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> hypo. I tried to I tried to enunciate it. Hypo. Right. But I would say hyper. Yeah. Instead of hypo. Yeah. Is there yeah. a hyper version? What? Yes. Hyper. Oh, hyper. Wake yeah. Hyper. Really sexual. And just, I mean, and distresses I you. I mean, uh, uh, apparently, the hypersexuality, like people that have a sex sex addiction, doesn't exist. Like I, I honestly, apparently, I don't know. I need to look into it properly. But um, I would look into the whole hypersexuality and like sex addiction thing, uh, because. To my knowledge, it's less sound than people might assume, but I might be wrong on that. So double check my work and let me know in the comments. Uh, but yeah, um, so uh, yeah, there's HSDD. Uh, we'll just call it that for now. Um, and then FSIAD. Uh, so that is basically uh, for women. So now in the DSM-5, uh, you can diagnose HSDD in men, but you can't diagnose it in women. Um, there is a different one for women and that has got an issue in and of itself because of like basically it's just this it's just this whole thing of like diagnosing women with low sexual desire and there's other there are other things that cause it sort of thing or other reasons for low sexual desire mm. uh, it, there, there are so many cultural issues that sort of feed into this that it's is that kind of like diagnosing diarrhea differently based on what caused the diarrhea uh, yeah I mean, kind of, yeah it, like, honestly like this sort of medicalization of this in this particular way is kind of a pain to get around uh it, it basically there's a lot there could be a lot of sexism in diagnosing women with fsiad right and out of interest what does that stand for female sexual interest slash arousal disorder yeah Amazing so you just had that off the top of your head i mean i know yeah i just yeah I just throw all that stuff there. There. yeah yeah, yeah. absolutely <laughs> so... but more reliable than wikipedia jam 100 percent. absolutely yeah. far more reliable than wikipedia much more like an encyclopedia Anyway, Wikipedia. One of the criteria, so there's a couple of the criteria uh, for FSIAD are absent uh, or reduced interest in sexual activity, and absent or reduced uh, sexual or erotic thoughts or fantasies. And uh, this is difficult because a doctor's basically got to judge that. But also, um, the, the, you need to have this for uh, like at least six months. And in these, um, in in the diagnostic criteria for this, do you know how whenever we're talking about mental health disorders and um, and like uh, and all of these sort of psychopathologies and Whenever we look at the actual diagnostic criteria, one of the main things is it says, if it's a religion, then you're fine. Yes. Yes. Yeah? Well, there's a similar one here for if you're asexual, oh, then you're fine. You've got to be, like, as in you can't be diagnosed with it if you're asexual. And you basically, right. if, you, if you don't want to be diagnosed with it, you don't need, like, one of the key things is that you, there's a sort of discomfort or, um, like, sort of, like... Uh, you're disquieted by it. You know, you're you're not mm. like you're yeah. not happy with it. I imagine is asexuality quite stable over time. Yeah, 
Right. Yeah. Okay. But then this is again, this is the thing. Like you've got people that are like, like I know people. I genuinely have friends that identified as asexual when they were like twelve, thirteen, and on Tumblr, and then <laughs> they went through puberty, and they were like, oh, oh, no, oh, I was just a, I was a child when I when when and again, some people are asexual, like realize they're asexual, and they absolutely are. But it's it's it, I think it's odd because like. Again, we 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 this again. This comes down to viewing asexuality as exactly the same as being gay or bi, mm. when it's a kind of different dimension, a different spectrum in and of itself. Mm. And so there is, it's it's got its own sort of eccentricities. You know, it, it's 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 sort of esoteric in that way. And yeah, so like someone absolutely can think that they are, like someone absolutely can think that they're uh, asexual just because because they're not experiencing sexual attraction but that could change over their life and that's fine in the same way that but like it's i think it's treated kind of and we'll get to this towards the end but it's treated kind of differently to like you know um any other sexuality wherein like someone can think that they're straight and then realize that they're not but some but it's often treated differently to someone thinking that they're asexual and then realizing that they're realizing that they're not mm. do you know what i mean yeah like we don't try to invalidate being uh straight or being gay if someone realizes that, that they're bi or whatever you know yeah do you see what Whereas, I mean? Whereas, like, that becomes the stereotype of asexuals. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's 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 odd. It's it's. I think you, but the, that would happen to people who are trans. People who like are they think they are trans, and then they discover they're not, and then people use that as evidence to go, oh, see, so they're all just confused. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. But then, then being trans, that's a gender thing, not a sexuality. Thing. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So like, it's it is it's kind of interesting on that front. And another thing that I was gonna mention later on, but I'll I mean I'll mention it now. Who cares? Um. <laughs> is that me i care so i mean so i mean this sort of diagn like it kind of feeds into this sort of like trying to diagnose asexuality thing i mean and i guess what we'll say is like the question here that i've got written down is is asexuality real or is like is a slash a disorder right and this is difficult because we're talking about like this sort of these sort of like sexual desire disorders right and they could be conflated with asexuality when they're kind of different things mm. really and ultimately, like you can, like some people that have these disorders for like a limited period of time, like say, like they've got it because they're depressed or the medication or whatever, this decrease their sexual drive, which makes them present to like maybe the untrained eye as someone that is like asexual, then it, it, it really makes the waters murky is what I'm saying. But mm. I think the key here is that obviously asexuality is real. Like if you, if people are experiencing this thing and saying, Hey, I'm experiencing this thing, then that thing is real, right? Like what they're experiencing is real. Everything like the debates that we have about whether X is real or whether Y is real is basically just like it's like the whole sort of trender debate. It's literally it just it's just trying to talk about like the labels that we use for things. Mm. Like the internal experience is always going to be real because people are experiencing it. Yeah. So like oh, I always think these questions of is asexuality real? It's just what are you asking? You know? Yeah. Like what is the point of your question? People are experiencing this thing. Are you saying that they're not experiencing it? Shut up. Well, someone will be saying that they're Absolutely. not experiencing it. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But it's implying that they're all fakers. Yeah. And like yeah. that's a different that's a different thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like saying like if you're saying that, then you're you just come out and say like these people are all faking it and they're and I think they're all lying. Because that sounds way more stupid and people will not want to it Sounds more honest as well. It sounds more honest. Yeah. But it yeah, also way more stupid and like <laughs> like like you'll get way less people behind you on it. Yeah. So my point is that like obviously, yes, of course it's real. But and is a sexuality disorder? N no absolutely not obviously i think it's just that it's it's interesting that like because in western society we have this view of like an absence of sexual desire um it's a disorder whereas like obviously like an absence of sexual desire in some other cultures could be seen as being like uh, a very good thing right mm. yeah like, and it feels like it feels like the idea that asexuality is a disorder sort of stems from the same place as um sort of homophobic people using darwinism as a yeah. justification for their homosexual uh, homophobia yeah. because it's like oh it doesn't make sense because um procreation and it's you know blah 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 mm. and then you find out that there's plenty of reason why um some people in in a tribe for example being homosexual would be beneficial mm -hmm. some people being asexual in a tribe could be beneficial and the group is selected for and some people have the some people who do pass on their genes still have the asexual gene even if they're not asexual in that in that uh, lifetime, mm -hmm. right? And so, uh, yeah, it's a misunderstanding of Darwinian natural selection yeah. used to justify being homophobic Homophobia. or being ace acephobic. Yeah. yeah, I think it's interesting as well that another thing that people say when it comes to like trying to invalidate asexuality as a thing, because like ultimately, I, 
people are like, oh, you can't because not experience sexual attraction. Like, how can you not? Like, well, would you agree that people experience varying ranges of sexual attraction? Or do you think that every single person experiences sexual attraction to the exact same level? Oh man, I can't imagine not liking pizza. Yeah. Right. It feels like maybe somebody making that suggestion is very high, highly sexual and think it's yeah. like present in the world as opposed yeah. to like, um, you know, just an attra- in their head, like the attraction's happening in their head. It's not present in the world. But, but people, but the issue, I think uh, uh, the issue that a lot of people have is that they think, well, you can, you're not asexual. You just like, you just don't like sex that much. You don't want to have sex. Lots of people don't want to have sex, right? That's like, you ch- you can't make a whole sexuality out of it, but it's just mm. like, well, you're misunderstanding that it's, there's a, there's a different dimension, right? If there are people that do like enjoy sex or do feel experience sexual attraction, uh, to varying degrees, then it makes sense that on the other end of that spectrum, there are people who experience less, and it's fine for them to want and use yeah. a label because they do have a different experience, and it like it's yeah. useful for them, and it conveys that information to others. But like, I mean, kind of one thing I want to bring up is the sort of like the sort of um, the way that we talk about people, the way that we invalidate asexual people by saying, "Oh, well, like this person is only asexual because of trauma." Yeah, yeah, but there are there are lesbians that are lesbians because of trauma, but um, it doesn't mean that like every like lesbian is invalid because yeah. some like some people would other like might otherwise be bisexual if there wasn't trauma. There are some people that are that are like there are some people that are bisexual because of um like essentially because of like uh was it compat compulsory hem- like heterosexuality like there are so many reasons that people <laughs> would identify as like there are so many people that would identify as straight. Mm. Despite probably being bisexual for any number of reasons, like uh, some of them, like 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 you know what I mean, like that's like but, saying this person only likes trains because they were exposed to trains at a young age. Exactly. If they weren't, yeah, sure, but they like they still like trains. Exactly. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, doesn't matter how they got there. So, yeah, I like, guess that's kind of like the, the they're sort of using the nature nurture debate to say that well, if it's if 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 it's nurture, then it's not real. Yeah. It has and, to only be nature. Again, probably a misunderstanding of Darwinian natural selection. Yeah. And absolutely, you know, there are different reasons for people identifying as asexual. Absolutely. And I'm not going to sit here and say that absolutely no one that identifies as asexual identifies as such due to due to trauma. But like, why is that the conversation that we're having when like I could point to all of these other like like all of these other sexualities that we all that we like all like put on the same sort of plane as asexuality? When you know we've said they're on a different dimension, but I can put all the other ones and say, well, here's reasons for that. These people like identifying as this due to trauma. Like people identify as straight due to trauma. People identify as like gay or lesbian due to trauma. Like why? Why is the conversation around invalidating asexuality when all of these other sexualities can have the exact same thing? You know? Yeah. It's it's just it is interesting to me that like this is how we view the situation with asexuality and i think genuinely a part of that i mean obviously ignorance obviously but i think a part of it comes down to what we were talking about earlier but like just this misunderstanding of what it actually is you know mm. yeah. yeah so obviously there's been like research on whether like asexual people have like you know like how as- asexual people like work like how they tick all that sort of stuff like so do you know sort of do you remember jamie's uh, how jamie came on and spoke about his research Yes. Yeah. Do you remember what his research was in regards to transgender sexuality? Yeah. Do you remember what like, kind of specifically the experiments that he did? Putting um, tiny little penis measuring devices onto penises, mm-hmm. and then getting subjects to watch porn, and then measuring and little blood flow. vagina arousal sticks. Oh yes, and vagina arousal sticks, and then That's measuring what I my penis, and then measuring blood. <laughs> oh, Cory! <laughs> this is an asexuality episode. Of all why, the episodes, why this you'd episode? brag about your penis. <laughs> And then would measure blood flow to the genital area. <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 more, yeah, more or less. So, uh, what do you think happens when we do these experiments with asexual people? Oh, fascinating. Um, well, it probably depends on whether they like having sex. Well, it probably varies a bit. We find that uh, from what I've seen, asexual people still experience physiological arousal. Oh really? Yeah. Oh wow. Um, there needs to be more studies done on it, obviously, but th- apparently, yeah. So yeah, they've they've done this with asexual women, and they find that um, asexual women have like basically the same sort of physiological uh, arousal patterns as sort of allosexual, non-asexual women. Um, that sort of like uh, ca- non-category specific arousal, which you know how like uh, cis women will generally be attracted to both genders. Well, show mm-hmm. yeah, show physio- genders. Show physiological yeah. arousal with 
like with both, both yeah, both sorry, both yes, I was being, I was not specific enough. No, I, 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 I <laughs> all women are attracted to all genders, exactly. <laughs> and so, if a woman doesn't like you, you're, you're not the a person, problem. you're a gen. Wow. I'm a person. Wow. Way to make it like we're just launching a thousand incel ships over here, aren't we? Oh, goodness <laughs> me. So no, so uh, th- th- that's the thing. Um, they've they they find that like the sort of that sort of asexual pattern of arousal in uh, in women was similar to non asexual uh, women, uh, cis women um, in this regard. Now, uh, what is interesting though is that when they showed them like sort of I think it was porn essentially, um, they they track they sort of track their eye movement and there was less sort of I guess less attention paid to the sort of porn from the asexual people in that they they didn't have a they didn't necessarily have a specific attraction to any any part of it they weren't like looking at it in a way that they were attracted to it mm. i'm heavily simplifying it here but basically what i'm saying is that that physiological arousal is sort of the same from this study mm. that i've seen linked in the links below again more studies should be done but from this one but um there's also like th- th- there was also like a difference in the way that they were sort of like looking at the sexual material that they were given right like they weren't um they were looking at it in a different way to the allosexual, the non-asexual people, which is interesting, right? Like, mm. obviously, it's what what that is giving us, what what information that is giving us is that at least in cis asexual women, that there is still that physiological um, response, but there is like there there is you you can see the difference between asexual people and non-asexual people, right? Yes, so there's there's something different going on in the different in the different people, mm. which is uh, very encouraging for asexual validity. Yeah, but th- and that's a th- this, again. This is the thing. Like we like we've done this with gay people. Like like that was in the DSM. Being gay was in the DSM. Well, homosexuality was in the DSM, and they removed it. And it's like, and it's weird because I, I, I find myself thinking, well, if people don't want to have if, like this is if people don't want to have a sort of low sex drive and stuff, then those disorders shouldn't be removed from the DSM. I, mm-hmm. It's just the conflation of those disorders with asexuality, mm-hmm. and I think that's what people get confused by because it's like. Yeah. Homosexuality was like explicit. Like that was explicit. Like if you're gay, you're crazy, yeah. right? But in this case, they've said if you're asexual, this isn't you. This is just people who have a like a transient or temporary, mm-hmm. um, like sudden loss in sexual se- yeah. desire, sexual desire, yeah. or yeah, sexual desire, or potentially um, attraction. Like it, like it's, it doesn't explicitly yeah. say that for the one that they give to men, but the woman. They do, but also like it, it, I don't know. It's like it's very complicated. I mean, honestly, I would like to do maybe m- more research on this and bring um, an asexual friend in, and we could have like a, a further discussion on this because mm. it is all really interesting. Mm. I think it's also really important to always remember in any kind of discussion like this, you know, is it, and you have plenty of evidence of this in the past, which is to say that um, just because something has been categorized in a certain way, uh, for example, homosexuality being classed as a mental disorder. Um, does not mean that that is a true classif- classification. Mm. At any one point in science, um, we are categorizing things to the best of our ability at the time. Sometimes with massive um, with massive bias coming in. For example, in the case of um, categorizing homosexuality as a mental disorder, and so like all cat- they're, they're not the, the- it's just a coincidence that gay people are crazy, right? <laughs> How convenient. <laughs> Um, and so like basically the idea goes like um, all models are wrong some models are helpful and it's about trying to f- if we've modeled something as like okay we've stuck that we've stuck this thing for now in the in the category of mental disorder or in the category of like um, you know whatever category we might stick it in that doesn't mean it's true it means mm-hmm. that's the category we've stuck it in for now yeah. uh, until we figure out that that's actually an unhelpful categorization um, and so we find a more helpful one. Yeah, maybe. exactly, mm. exactly. Um, they're all they're, they're always going to be wrong. Yeah. Um, they're just it's just the differing degrees of helpfulness. Yeah, absolutely. And I think a good thing to end on this is the sort of pathologizing of asexuality because this is something that genuinely happens quite a mm. lot. Yeah. And I think we need to very much we very much need to take a focus on that and sort of separate the pathologization of asexuality from like sexual desire disorders because. Yeah. I don't think the solution is to say actually it is totally valid to have no sexual do- if it's str- if it's distressing to you that you're that you're sex because tra- like I'm not gonna lie I have been I've been a depressed boy every now and then been a sad little boy sometimes sometimes I take I take so sadness it, t- it takes me um and like it's yeah when you're depressed your sex drive can just like plummet disappear 
like to the point where sometimes I've I've I've, I've thought where I was like, oh man, that's just I had that's that's a part of me that just doesn't it's not there anymore. Like I just yeah. it's just like it's like oh that door is locked. Okay, cool. Okay, and like I'll try again later. Yeah, it's never been distressing to me because like I'm like like. You know, I mean, it's there, and oh, yeah, she'll come we'll back. Get to, we'll get to she'll it. come back. I'll find the key. Bigger problems. Um, exactly. But my point is that, like, ultimately, I don't think that the solution to that, and I'm not saying that anyone, like any essential people, are saying this, but like, obviously, th this is this is a sort of narrative that people will spin. I don't think the solution to that is to say that actually, um, any any time you are like your sexual desire is decreased, or you've got a low low to no sexual desire or low to no sexual attraction, that is totally valid. It's your life. Mm. If you are not through like societal uh, pressures, right? And obviously it's difficult to like remove those. But if you are just like, if your sexual, like if your like sort of relationship with your sexuality has sort of changed and you're like, oh, wait, hold on. I think there might be an issue here. That's like, that's fine. You should be able to get help for that, right? You know, like if it's to do with depression yeah. or medication or anything like that, then absolutely. Like you should be allowed to, allowed to like, you know, yeah. seek medical help for that. Yeah. And, and on both sides, that doesn't to the ace phobes prove yeah, that no, being not. ace is not a thing but equally for ace people it doesn't mean that your community and your identity is any less valid just because somebody decided that they think they don't belong to it yeah and i think i think that's the, i think that is it though because yeah. like ultimately we are being when we use these labels like the reason that asexual people are so varied and diverse the same with like every other group of people the reason that every group of people is diverse is because whenever we say like ah yes gay men what is a gay man they're not all the same thing yeah, yeah. one man's definition of gay is probably quite different to another man's definition of gay for example one man's definition of gay could probably be very transphobic um, another mm -hmm. man's definition of gay could be yeah, true. not so and even if they don't have transphobic definitions one man could just not be attracted to certain genitalia when another man like is right so if i was to say to you a gay man that tells you so little information because like these labels are these categories are just broad very very broad like ultimately think about this we're taking 8 billion people right and let's say we've got like the standard like sort of the standard group of um sexuality descriptors we've got gay straight let's use lesbian as well right mm -hmm. let's chuck in a pan and a bi and asexual yeah got six Damn. six of these little labels for 8 billion people 1.2 billion per cat 1.3 billion per category right i feel like that one i don't point, think it's distributed like, I, yeah I, 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 no, but my point on is average. <laughs> yeah, on average right but then <laughs> but then this they're they're gonna be still really bloody varied yeah, right like yeah. like you, like you can't like if i was to split the world up into like six groups and expect yeah. every single member of that group to be consistent in some way no yeah. this is why i want to have a uh, thing it'd be really interesting to have like laid out all of the well understood and well accepted uh D um, dimensions of sexuality because you could kind of pinpoint yourself on like yeah. a ten dimensional grid of where <laughs> you fall. I think that'd be really interesting. Well, the most simple one I find, and this is this is one that is very easy for people to make fun of because when you go to someone's Instagram account and it says I'm a pan romantic demi uh, demi gray asexual um, like a, a gay man, yeah. right? Yeah. That is them giving as much information as yeah. possible. And the reason that people make fun of that is because it sounds like long and people yeah. think, oh, that's silly. Well, that's like but people it, want, why are you that, thinking about it so the much? The criticism is that you like you want to like be different. Yeah. Right? yeah. You're yeah. Which, trying to be but you're just trying to be specific. Yeah, well, like which for me, I like I, I'm like, you're doing nothing wrong for me. I'm looking at it and I'm like, I don't need that information, I don't care. But that is that is where it ends for me. I'm I, like literally with that, I'm just like, I don't care. Because it's not relevant to me. <laughs> I haven't you told do. you to go and <laughs> yeah. pursue them. So, no, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Until I do. <laughs> then it'll become relevant information. Well, yeah, but you. you'll give me the report, Luke. You always give me the report. It's uh, very yeah. thorough. Um, binder. <laughs> not, not that kind of binder. The whole dissertation. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> on one person as well. Yes. <laughs> that's the story of their life. Yeah. Um, uh, so that's why I've never had sex. Because every single one of time I want to do it, I've just got to read like someone's entire life oh, story. Right, come on. Start taking notes. <laughs> and start the interview process. <laughs> so, no, but like, it is, it is interesting, right? Because... That is that they're just providing like like as concise like uh, not as concise as sort of accurate information as they can. Yeah. yeah. And my point to that is that the three dimensions, like if we're just going to simplify it, um, but like give like a, a lot I of information without being unwieldy. Yeah. The three dimensions are romantic attraction, um, sexual attraction, and then the ace spectrum the of yeah. attraction, gender attraction, right? Yeah. And then you could obviously like um like you, well I mean it's really not three dimensions it's two two dimensional graphs. Yeah. 
because you've got the romantic and sexual and then the like like the sort of other dimension of like going in between them the, of, yeah. of well, the other dimension of the asexual the, the ace yeah right so you've yeah, got yeah. like how romantically attracted are you and who are you romantically attracted to who are you sexually attracted to and how like how much he's actually attracted to like, oh, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So we just need like a everyone needs to have a QR code no. that you can scan <laughs> and it tells you on a on a multiple dimensional graph exactly their sexual sexuality. I think we just give people a number that corresponds to their place on that graph. Be a very long number though. Yes. Depending on the specificity per dimension. Yeah. And well, it would have a bunch of commas. <laughs> <laughs> so well thing. yeah you could give them like a it's just, like it's just, a number in the trillions and each comma for every like million billion trillion thousand would be a different plot point on a different dimension of the graph yeah and that is entirely unwieldy and realistically if we want to be like as specific as possible we could like like because like if i ask someone oh, are you are you gay and they're like yeah i'm gay some of my gay friends are bi like by all like if we're being as strict yeah. and like draconian about our definitions as, as possible. Yeah. Some of my gay friends are bi and they'll be like, I guess I'm a bit bi, but I say I'm gay because that is the most useful term mm. because it doesn't mm. matter what someone is like, actually, if you're going to, if you, there even is like an actually, it matters what is like socially useful yeah. in, in describing themselves to other people. Right. Cause like if someone that is like, Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm mostly, I'm mostly gay, but like, there have been two women in my life where I've been like, yes, they seem attractive. <laughs> then it, it doesn't really help to be like, hello, everyone, I'm a bisexual man. Because like <laughs> women are going to be throwing themselves at you. And like, no. I feel targeted right now. <laughs> what? I feel targeted. I was actually talking about someone else. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sat right here. We have one of these right here. Look at it. <laughs> no, I wouldn't do that to you. I was genuinely thinking, I won't say, no, I won't no, say no, their no, name. No, really. I, was, I was specifically talking about another, another very close friend of mine. Ah, <laughs> that's nice. Yeah. Yeah. That's glad yeah. to know I've got two, a two and a set. Um, but that again, like this is my point. We've been over this so many times about categories and specificity and it boggles my mind. It, it, bothers me to no end that people get stuck on this sort of like ah the category is is fact but the label and is important the label is important is is the label is as important as you make it yes like ultimately like it's it's kind of like what luke is saying about the sort of there are no like what is it there are no like true models there are no correct models all models are, like, are wrong some models are helpful yeah exactly right so like all categories all labels are inaccurate yeah but some are useful yeah right like they're like they're not like an inaccurate doesn't mean wrong inaccurate just means like not strictly true. Well, no, no, no. It means no, no. Inaccurate just doesn't means in this sense means not as specific as it could be, right? Like as in it is like my accuracy. Like I could be a little bit off. Like the names of colors. Yeah, exactly. Blue and green. There's a bit in the middle where you know it's bluey green. I did a video on that, and apparently transphobes have told me that I need to learn about teal. Oh. But transos needs to learn that if you go with teal, put teal and blue next to each other, tell me what the middle color there yeah, is. Exactly. There's always a color in between. They don't get it. They just they just don't imagine hating a group of people so much that you don't understand colors. That is unbelievable to me. <laughs> um, you never seen a rainbow? When they see a rainbow, they literally just see the color become the next color oh, with a hard line. They don't see they, the they, rainbow. Deci they decide where one color becomes another and everybody else <laughs> has a like bottom line. pride flag. <laughs> like with blocks of colors. <laughs> no. Separate but equal except for those ones. You know? <laughs> 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 Dear me. Yeah, no, but I mean, I think I think that's it. I think we've really covered everything. I mean, just to kind of summarize that obviously, like, um, asexuality is not a disorder. Uh, it's, no, it isn't. It's absolutely not. Um, and asexual people are varied. Some asexual people want to, like, can have sex. All, all of these different things, right? Asexuality is the, the little to no sexual desire. It exists on its own sort of dimension um, as a spectrum. Um, and yeah like people should really know more about it maybe we'll do another episode on this if you want us to do another episode please let us know we will absolutely endeavor to get someone that is asexual on um an ace an ace a real one yeah an ace in the hole you know what an ace, like you got an ace in the hole what that's a phrase is it well just cut that then what does it mean like you you've got like an like an ace up your sleeve oh wait no hold on ace up your sleeve ace in the hole what's an an hole? ace is a tennis a hole move. In one. Where you get a serve when the person doesn't hit it back. No, ace in the hole is a phrase. Okay, well, it means maybe uh, when you're talking about sex, it's not a particularly helpful phrase. Get an ace in your hole. 
No, you specific. Well, actually, you can. You can. Because that's very that progressive. Of your well, then you've made up for your, <laughs> hey! made up for your uh, bad advantage. joke earlier. An advantage. Yeah. yeah. An ace in the hole means an advantage. So okay. It made complete sense. You just don't understand me. Okay. Yeah. Please get down in the comments and let us know if you've seen our merch. Let us know. Are you asexual? Where do you lie on the ace spectrum? Let us know that. Um, and also let us know if you want us to do another episode on this. I think that's all from us, right? We've yeah, got anything else you want to say? Yeah, that's absolutely it. Well, it's not absolutely it. We've got the well, quick fire quiz. Dun, 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 dun. Asexual edition. So the quick fire quiz is the same as always. The rules are as follows. I will ask one question. It's one question between two of you. The first person to answer the question after I finished asking the question, they've got to buzz in before they answer the question. Yep, that's all in the wrong order, but it's all there. <laughs> Wins. What do they win, champ? <laughs> Nothing. Gosh darn. Right. Yeah. So, Luke. What is your buzzer? Ace. Jeff, what is your buzzer? Sexual. <laughs> <laughs> oh my good lord. My question for you is, roughly what percentage of the population might be asexual? Oh, Ace. Sexual. Yes, One to six percent. That is correct. Hooray! Good well done. Because I didn't remember. I was just going to guess. <laughs> Neither did I. I was scrolling through my notes trying to find it. Well done, Luke. You win absolutely nothing. I'm so proud. Oh, I'm so happy for you. So I think that's it from us. Thank you all. That was an ace episode, by the way. Yeah. Thanks. Did you have to interrupt the outro for that one? Yeah, I did. <laughs> I had to get it in. It's never going to be... I suppose I'm going to go to after the outro. Anyway, do your outro. Since it's a patron vote episode this month, which if you head over to our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash sci guys, you can vote and submit topics every single month. Yeah, you can. And we'll go ahead and do them. And as tradition, we will be thanking all of our new patrons for this month. So why don't we get started with a big thank you to Striker. Thank you, Arf. Thank you, Eleanor. Thank you, Jasmine Barbosa. Thank you, Natasha M. Thank you, Noah Purchase. Thank you, Sif. Thank you, Iris Kuwidgeman. Thank you to Catherine Thomas. Thank you, Sandra Golunska. Thank you to Metavore. <laughs> no. <laughs> I still don't know what that means. <laughs> Thank you, Benjamin David Taylor. Thank you, CG. Thank you, Ellie Daniels. Thank you, Raffaella. Thank you, Lewis White. Thank you, Saskia Horton. Thank you, Sophie Mellet. Thank you, Armory. Thank you, Meraki. Thank you, Eva Makovska. Thank you, Kane. Thank you to KS. Kiss. Kiss. Thank you to all of our patrons, old and new. And I think that is it for the end of the episode, is it not? That's it, it for the end of the episode, is. is it not? End it. Thank you to all of our patrons and thank you for watching. You can find the full references for this episode in the description. Subscribe for new episodes every Sunday and why not leave us a nice wee comment. You can support the pod over at patreon.com forward slash sci guys or join the community on our Discord and you can pick up our merch at normalcitizen.store. You can also find and contact us at sci guys pod on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram and here on YouTube too. And you can find us at sci guys on TikTok too. Or you can send us an email at sci guys pod at gmail.com. That's sci guys pod at gmail.com. Sci guys pod at gmail.com. You can follow me at Ocar everywhere. Follow me at Champkin everywhere. You can follow me at Luke Cutforth everywhere. All right, goodbye. Mm, goodbye. Mm, goodbye. Thank you.